If you look at, and we talked about this in the book, you look at what's happened to the cost of an education now, or you look what's going on in these student loans and some of these for-profit college, it would make you ill. And, and, and right now, we're, we're getting to the point in this country where economists are starting to say, maybe the value of an education, <laughs> the cost of an education is not worth the value. That is an assumption that we would have never made when we were young. We always knew that the education was the most valuable thing. They, make, they wonder themselves, what's happening here? They're raising tuition. The access is being cut off. They're getting strapped with loans. Let me be partisan here for just a second. One of the great things that President Clinton tried to do this, President Obama accomplished, I think it's one of his great accomplishments. It used to be the student loan program ran so the money would go from the government to the bank. The bank would lend the money the government would assume the risk and the bank would make the money off the interest. The president said, no, we're going to lend the money directly to the student, we'll assume the, we'll assume the risk, but the government would, would do it. And it saved, I want to say, $60 billion. And Romney said if he was president, he'd change it to the old way. They had conservative economists saying, I don't understand why he's saying this. It makes utterly no <laughs> sense in the world. Why are we trying to make an education more expensive when everybody in, from this room to every person in every focus group knows that education is the ticket to the middle class. It's the ticket to everything. If once we don't value that, when I went to LSU Law School, my tuition was $95 a semester. I literally, like, <laughs> paid it out of my pocket. I used to work <laughs> offshore. <laughs> Who in the hell goes to law school today anywhere and pays the tuition out of their pocket? And these kids coming back from Afghanistan and Iraq, they literally recruit them to go to these for-profit colleges. They sign them up for this horrendous student loans that they get, and half of them drop out. The skills that they get are not with any. It's a real problem. I'm, I'm going to get off the soapbox and turn it back to you, but I just I mean, wanted I to get this off my chest. But just you know, on I, was, <laughs> I know that's something that you care about. I know that. <laughs> just the actual voter, the, you know, just refuses to give in to this. Even though they go, they hear this calculation, it's not really worth it, there's so much debt. They are desperate for a strategy for themselves to figure out how they come out of this. It's very different than other countries. I do work across the world, particularly in Europe and particularly in Britain. When you do focus groups, in the, in the current contraction there, it is very bleak. Now, they're looking for collective action, they're looking for you know, the government to do things, they're looking for a change of policy. But here, these people are actively, every single one of them, figuring out, all right, what new skill do I get? How do I get education? How do I afford my kid, kid being able to afford it? They just don't, they can't, they don't have time for this, <laughs> for this discussion. They, there's, no, there's no choice. They, they assume at some point they'll get a chance to, to use it and they'll take the risk. Now, they wish to have a better political context and leaders who are going to address these education issues, but education is, is, the, is the one thing they have as a, strategy, a personal strategy for getting through it. 